Hey, how's it going? It's Corey Allgood again. Uh, I was talking with a guy on Discord who was trying to come up with a way to uh, transfer MIDI from his electronic drum set into his uh, DAW. Uh, and I figured it would probably be easiest if I just went ahead and made a video for him. And I figured I would share it in case this would help anyone else. Uh, so uh, his use case is actually going to be he wants to transcribe the things that he's playing so that he can actually count the notes and see what subdivisions he's using, things along those lines. Uh, but this would also be really good to double over if you wanted to do something along the lines of um, you know, recording MIDI drums and then running your drums through a drum software like uh, Superior Drummer or Get Good Drums or Easy Drummer or Steven Slater, you know, really anything. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how, I'm going, uh, how I have this set up. Uh, now, I use a, a Roland uh, drum kit, and I've got a Roland TD27 uh, module on it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to do this for my specific module. Uh, if you're using a different Roland module, you're still going to do the same thing on the Roland website. Uh, if you're using a different uh, brand module altogether, you're going to want to go to that manufacturer's website for the driver. You're going to want to get the driver specific to your device. So uh, right now we're on the Roland website. So what we're gonna wanna do is go to support. We're gonna go to updates and drivers. And then we're gonna want to look for the, pro uh, the product that we have. In my case, I know that it's a TD27. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the T to Z I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to find my TD27 and it's right here, so I'll click on that. And then down here, it's got a couple of different options. Now I'm running Windows 10. If you're running Windows 10 or 11, you're gonna to wanna to grab that one. Uh, Windows 8, you'll wanna grab that one. There's a couple of Mac OS ones. So get the driver that works best for the module that you have. Now again, or the module you have and the operating system you have. Now again, I'm using uh, Windows 10, so I'm gonna download the Windows driver. I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna agree. I'm, we're all gonna pretend that we read this because we've all seen South Park and we know what happens if Steve Jobs finds out that you don't know how to read. So we're gonna pretend that we did read this. We're gonna click that button and we're gonna hit download file. And we're gonna go ahead and open up uh, the, the zip file that it comes with. And I just, uh, went to my scratch folder. I'll just move the folder over there. And because I had already downloaded it, I get a little message. Then you go ahead and open this up. You run the setup program and it's just done and over with very quickly. Okay, so now we've got the driver installed. So what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and plug our module into our computer via USB. So I'm gonna go and do that now. As soon as it's plugged in, you wanna turn your drum module on and then Windows will go ahead and take it from there for a moment. Okay, so I just connected it. Now, if it's your first time connecting it, Windows will probably give you a little warning that says, you know, we're setting this up. So if, it, if you see that, wait for a moment. And then if you open up your notifications, it will tell you when it's all done. So now that we're already ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Reaper. I have a brand new project here. Before we get started, I'm gonna go to Options Preferences. And I'm going to go ahead and find the drum module that we just installed. In my case, it's the TD27. And you'll notice that it's disabled. Uh, when the device is off, you want to come back in here and disable this again. Otherwise, we, Reaper will act really funny. Uh, I, I haven't tested this with any other DAW, so if you're using Cubase or Studio One, it may handle it better. I can't give you an answer on that. But for Reaper, uh, don't turn it on unless it's in use. But because it is on and it's plugged in, I'm going to go ahead and enable the input, and you see it switches to enabled. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a new track and I'm gonna change the input from uh, input one down to MIDI and I'm going to use my TD27 
And I'm going to go ahead and say all channels because we're not worried about capturing a single specific channel at the moment. We just want to get the drums running through our DAW. So if I go ahead and uh, just arm this for recording, uh, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and just uh, start recording and just get your MIDI. Uh, it wouldn't be very productive, in my opinion, uh, without a, a piece of drum software. But you could. You could sit down at your kit, turn on a, a click track, and just play, and you'd be able to, to figure out what you're dealing with. Uh, but what I would like to do is I would like to be able to monitor what is going on in my kit. So I'm going to go ahead and put a drum VST onto it. And in my case, I'm just going to go down to tune track, which is around here somewhere. If I know my alphabet, we're in business, you guys. Uh, Superior Drummer 3, and it takes a little, mi uh, a little minute to load here. And I'm going to go ahead and just pick a kit. I'm going to go ahead and go Black Metal, why not? All right, and then I'm going to walk over to our drum kit, and I'm just going to go ahead and test it and make sure this is working. So it is working. Now, if you are planning on using Superior Drummer to actually record with uh, an e-kit, uh, something that I would like, uh, something that I would recommend doing is opening your MIDI mapping over here in Superior Drummer, and then there's a uh, MIDI in eDrum settings. Go ahead and click that, and then you're going to go use preset, and then scroll through the pre presets, and you'll see a bunch of different. Um, brands of e-kits that Superior Drummer actually mapped out specifically for. So in my case, I'm going to go down to Roland. <clears throat> now, I'm using a TD-27. It doesn't look like they actually have a TD-27 program, so I'm going to just kind of go for something that sounds like it would be similar in behavior. I'll pick the TD-25, and I'll go ahead and close this, and I'm going to run back to my kit, and I'm going to test again just to make sure that it's working. Okay, so it does sound like it's working. Uh, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, is I'm gonna go ahead and just play a very, very basic beat. And you're gonna have to bear with me because I am a completely brand new beginner at drums. And so I'm sorry for subjecting you to this. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and insert a click source. And we're at 120, so I'm just gonna do a very standard ACDC kind of drum beat for a couple of measures, maybe throw a very simple round the world fill in. And we'll go ahead and just record and then we can look at the MIDI. All right, so I went ahead and did that. I, again, apologize for being a complete noob at drums. Bear with me. I'm going to delete that click source because, oh my goodness, doesn't a metronome get annoying when you're not the one using it? All right, so let's see what we've got. Here are all of the hits that I just did. If you saw my other video about uh, programming drums in Reaper, you saw how I set up my, my screen here. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, uh, and you're interested in kind of digging into the MIDI side of things, I do recommend going there as just kind of a basis for how all of that works. Uh, but if, if you did see that, uh, you'll see down here we have our velocities, um, and those are all the velocities that I hit while I was over there playing. 
And then you see all of the hits that I did, even, including those first couple ones where I was like, wait, where's the beat? So I'll go ahead and just play it from right about here. Maybe I will. I'm going to go ahead and disarm now. Oh, those are just the hits from me sitting. Great, uh, but it doesn't need to be. If, if I really wanted to, I could go ahead and quantize this and it would sound fine. Uh, down here, uh, if you right click on any of these numbers, you can go ahead and select all of them. And it kind of helps give you an idea of where on the kit each note that you're looking at is. Like here, here is our high tom, here's the mid tom, here's our floor tom. And you can see every instance that we have there, you can see where all of our, uh, our velocities are and everything. So there's that. And that is just short, sweet, and simple how you get uh, MIDI from your drum module into your computer and uh, get set up for recording or looking over a piece that you're working on as a drummer. So there you have it. Uh, that was how we got all of our MIDI from the drums into the computer uh, using MIDI over USB. Uh, I hope this was helpful for anyone out there. Uh, if this did help you, go ahead and just let me know in the comments because that kind of boosts my day and makes me feel good about making videos like this. Uh, if uh, you have any other questions or anything where it's uh, something technical related to getting up and running with uh, just kind of the, the beginner side of uh, recording music on your computer, please hit me up. Let me know in the comments. Uh, what you would like to see, what you're stuck on. Uh, if I don't have an answer for you, I would be happy to help you find one. Or uh, if I do have an answer, I would love to make a video to help you get where you're, you're trying to go. Uh, if you liked the video, please drop me a like. If you didn't, I'm sorry for wasting your time. Uh, outside of that, I just hope you have a great rest of your day. Be well.